Welcome to School Zone, the show all about your local school districts here in the White Mountains. I'm your host, John Larson. Today we have Dr. Eric Rask, uh, Sholo Unified School Districts District Psychologist with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad, Glad you're here. Good. good to see you and I appreciate you taking time to come out and see us. My problem, my pleasure. As we get started, I'd love to know a little more about you. Tell, tell us about yourself and let the people know a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Um, so I am actually not an Arizonan by by birth, I actually grew up in New Hampshire. Um, came, came out to Arizona with my family, um, started my education out at NAU. Um, that's where I got my bachelor's in psychology, then went on to get my master's um, in psychology as well, um, which allows me my current certification as a licensed uh, professional counselor. And then... Um, was that from NAU also? That was from University of Phoenix. Oh, okay, great, yeah. So um, and then I did that for a few years, and that was my original um, employment with, with the district was as a licensed professional counselor that was new to Sholo to bring in a, a licensed counselor as for not academic reasons. So my main purpose in bringing, coming onto the district originally was just to provide behavioral supports to the students at Sholo. How many years ago was that? Oh my, um, I believe I started back in 2005. Okay, okay, so you've been You've been part of the district for well over 10 years now. Yes, yep, Great. I have my 10 year plaque on my wall, so Great. I've been here at least 10 years. Um, that has evolved. Um, professionally, I was encouraged to actually go out and get my doctorate. And so through the Capella University, I, I got my school psychologist degree, and I just was um, awarded that degree um, back in June. Right. Um, then I, so my role in the district has changed. So I was um, offered the privilege to come on as a school psychologist for Yolo, uh, Shello Unified School District. And I've been providing services since August in that capacity. Great, super. Well, congratulations on your doctorate. I Thank know, you. Uh, I recently went back and got uh, my bachelor's and it was a difficult thing to do. So I, yes. I'm, I'm impressed you've, uh, you've gone above and beyond and, and Quite frankly, I'm grateful because it, it's, it's such a, a, a great opportunity for us to provide services to our, to our children and their families. And so I'm really grateful for that and grateful for your uh, initiative to go out and get those degrees. You know, I, I, I think personally, I find that when we have uh, people who surround our children, successful people who surround our children, mm -hmm. when they see what higher education can do for them, uh, I, my hope is that it's always a motivation for them. I hope to so. To continue beyond high school and, you know, at least get a bachelor's degree. Right. And if not, uh, continue on farther. So um, your responsibilities have changed a little bit mm -hmm. uh, since August, you say, yes. right? Um, what's, a, what's a typical day look like? For you, so I know you're in at five in the morning, right? Yeah, pretty, pretty close. <laughs> I come in at seven. I usually leave around four, um, depending on what the day offers. It's um, where's it's, your office, by the way? I'm located at the high school. You're at um, the high school, okay? Off so the w, WMI building. Someone needs to visit with you. They can come into the high school and find you. Yep. yep. Okay. Take so what's a, what's a day look like for you? So typically, I come in. Um, I get a I get a list of honeydews from the district sped office of things I need to accomplish for that day. Now, when you say sped, we're talking oh special education. Okay. So the special education department um, they direct a lot of the services I provide at the school. Um, they're kind of the clearing house when needs are needed at the dis different schools. I service um, the high school, the junior high, uh, Whipple Ranch, Nicholas Homestead, as well as um, Linden. Great. So, so you cover them all. I do cover them all. Yep, cover them all. So um, my primary, so that, so for school psychological services, I cover the district, and then in additional to those duties, I also cover the mental health supports that are needed at Shallow High School. So mental health services are provided specifically at the high school, um, somewhat at the junior high, but um, w the way that works at our school district, it's a little unique because we have a, a team of mental health service providers at our district. Um, myself, Christina Rumsis, Christine Rumsis, um, and Jody Gaskell are both mental health providers at our district. And so we separate each school providing services for the mental health needs of the students. So um, I'm able to take on some diverse roles. Uh, my primary role is of, of with the psychological services, providing evaluations and um, consult services to administration. Um, I do see some, um, some kids on the side for a little bit if there's some immediate crises to address. 
Um, but that, that typically my day is laid out as my priority list is given to me by the district office. So are you saying you may come in one day and, and you may go to uh, one or all of the elementary schools or you may go to an elementary school, hop over the junior high, back to the high school, is that kind of a thing? Absolutely. Really? Yes. Really? Wow. So you are hopping then. I, I move around a lot, which I, that's you know, one of the things I like about my job is I get to, it's very diverse. It's not, not the same thing every day. Great. <laughs> and therefore, we're talking that uh, you may be visiting with a kindergartner at 9 o'clock and a high schooler at 11. Absolutely. And, and so you've got to be able to provide that uh, specialized service for each one of those children individually. Correct. Great. What are, um, I don't know if it's, well, let's, let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and just, and just talk about um, on average, I'm just curious, on average, uh, and I imagine this must change because y obviously you're, you're handling problems as they come up. So I'm assuming on, on Monday if there's an issue at a school, on Tuesday if it's not an immediate issue, I assume maybe if it's an immediate issue you're jumping on it if need be? Yep. Other, otherwise it, it comes to you the next day and you've got to go and address that and help out with that type of thing? So one of the first things I do in the morning is I do look at my list and I triage what needs to happen first. Um, you know, when I leave on a Tuesday afternoon um, with a plan of what I'm going to do Wednesday, it may look absolutely different when I come in that morning. Sure. Um, you know, our, our primary uh, goal is to make an educational learning opportunity for every student in the district. And so if there's a kid in crisis, we're going to respond to that first. Um, aside, you know, if there was a kid that was supposed to have a parent meeting, we may have to respond to a crisis before we go to a parent meeting. Um, okay. So, and th again, that can change from one day to the next. Um, we are, um, and, and it's nice that we have such a diverse team because if I'm not able to respond to it, maybe there's another mental health person that can respond to it. So we do a lot of that communicating. Um, it's, it is, you know, when you ask for like what would a regular day look like, I don't know if that exists. I don't know what a regular right. day is. Right. Um, and, not, and not that it's not something we can't meet, um, just we have to make sure we adjust and determine what's the biggest need to help the students be successful in the, in the in school setting. Okay, so you talked about um, having a meeting with the parents. Mm -hmm. um, whenever there's an issue with a child that you have to deal with, are you always meeting with the parents in one capacity or the other? Um, it depends. Um, so a lot of times there's behavioral plans that the parents know that we're gonna meet with the kids during the school, so I don't call with them every time. Um, but on crisis situations, so if a kid comes in and talks about suicide or talks about problems at home, obviously then we'll contact the parents, get them involved and try to work out some kind of an intervention. Um, there is daily stuff that I, you know, and at the high school level that a kid comes up, hey, my problems with my girlfriend and, mm -hmm. or my teacher hates me or, mm -hmm. uh, so those things we don't. Any, any of that stuff like, uh, you know, do, do you get a lot of issues with, uh, hey, I'm getting bullied or that kind of mm -hmm. stuff? Are we we'll have kids we come do? up and talk to us about that and we help them through that process. Excellent. Um, help them kind of get a clarity of whether it's bullying or you just need to find better friends. Mm -hmm. um, we really try to, um, and it looks different at other, every school. So at the high school level, we in junior high, we're trying to help the kids come to their own answer. Like, what are some things you can do to be to get out of the situation or to make this work out? Um, at the lower end, lower end kids like Nicholas and uh, Whipple Ranch out at Linden, we we do a little more directive. Hey, we're going to have you go over here at lunch, or we're going to move you to a different classroom because you and this other student don't seem to be getting along. So it looks a little bit different in our interventions or interactions with the kids. And again, we're trying to support their learning. There's a lot of things we can't fix outside of school. Um, mm -hmm. But what we try to do is make school successful for them. Right. So um, do we, uh, um, in, those, in those cases when, when there's, uh, I don't know if uh, offender is the right word, but when there's an offender, obviously we make sure that uh, we have contact with them and allow them the opportunity to understand what's going on. Absolutely. And allow them to rectify the situation also. Absolutely. Um, we do a lot of, a lot of mediation, if you Great. want to use that word. Great. Obviously, if there's anything legal involved, we would obviously involve the SRO and the administration. But in, you know, just kind of a general daily goings of kids where they might get in fights or disagreements mm -hmm. or um, we really try to work with both parties in, in teaching them this is what you do as an adult. Like when you disagree with somebody, 
you don't walk out, you try to resolve issues. Right, right. Um, so we try to give them some skills instead of trying to fix it for them. Right, yeah, you know, I, I know with my own children, whenever they have conflicts with others, we try to help them understand that those things uh, are a part of life mm -hmm. and, and you know that it'll it'll go on in your work life and in your social life as you become an adult so but we, we try to help them to understand ways to fix the problem themselves and to, uh, to give them to the tools to, yeah is the best yeah. way to do it fixing Great. it for them doesn't doesn't do anything giving them the tools to learn how to fix them is as much um, is, is a better way to approach it Excellent, excellent. Thanks. So, are you? Are do you see a, um, uh, a lot of positive parent involvement with the issues that you come up against? I think I've seen more as we've kind of gone along, and services have become a little bit more um, uh, intense. Mm -hmm. We're able to get more direct contact, involve the parents, be able to take the time and, and maybe mediate with the child and the parent about me ways to work on issues. Um, I'll do a lot of phone calls where I'll just call up parents and they have questions of what can we do different at home, you know, we're seeing the same thing, what are some suggestions? So we do a lot of parent supports that way. Um, we also are very much involved with a lot of the community mental health and so we're tied in with um, consult services out, we'll refer kids out or parents out to different services in the community as well. Great. So we really try to provide some holistic um, services for the students and, and not just, okay, we're going to fix it here at school. Maybe we involve some outside counseling, um, referral to other agencies, um, whether it's treatment centers or medical doctors or things. Um, we try to really involve as many people in the community as well as the school to provide those support services. Great. I think, um, I think mental health is, is becoming, it used to be kind of a taboo subject, mm -hmm. but Agreed. it's becoming more and more um, uh, known that we need to pay attention to this and, mm -hmm. and to help. So do you feel as these services are becoming more available to people that, that it's become more accepted and that people are more willing to uh, take advantage of the resources available to them? Um, I, I think it's very much a culture that has changed. I would agree that for one, uh, from a period of time where if you had depression, nobody talked about it. Right, right. Um, yeah, you didn't tell anybody. Right. Therefore, nobody talked about it, right? Right. And then that would obviously, it would come out in family life and careers in other areas that would become dysfunctional because you're not talking about it. So it shows up eventually. What I see now is that people are willing to talk about it and how we can say, okay, maybe you have depression, maybe you have anxiety. We're going to give you the tools to be able to manage that and be successful in the school setting. You know, because you have depression doesn't mean you can't do things it doesn't mean you can't play sports it doesn't we just help them learn hey there's tools to help support this this um, diagnosis and help you be successful in the school setting and i think teachers have been more open to that as um supporting that in the classroom okay that's great that's good to know when you when you speak of tools what are we talking about so Can you we, give me some examples? What we try to do, and again, it looks different from the younger kids compared to the older kids, um, and I'll, I'll speak a little bit more toward Nicholas and Whipple Ranch, and those are elementary schools. Those we try to involve, give the parents more of the tools to help the kids uh, manage their behaviors. We can give the kids some, but they're still kind of young and learning how, if I do this, then this, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, if I do this behavior, I know that I'll get this reward. So some of that we have to do some real basic stickers and tokens and they get a lot of um, reinforcement that way and so the tools are more kind of a, a externalized like we're providing supports through stickers and again support programs and extra time on the computer extra play time and then when you get to the junior high um, and high school level we try to give them to, to internalize some of these tools taking self timeouts knowing when to go take a walk knowing when to step away from a conversation knowing when to ask for help, where to go when you want help, um, who are great resources, which one of your friends are going to support you and being, you know, make putting you in a better mood, which one of your friends are going to encourage you to be depressed. Um, and so it looks a little different between different environments. But the nice thing about our district is because we do have such a um, continuity of care from K till 12, is that when these kids come up from Nicholas Homestead into the junior high, we know already what interventions they've been using at, at the Nicholas Homestead. So the, when they come up to the junior high, we say, hey, look, this worked at the Nicholas Homestead. Why don't you try this at the junior high and, and keep moving forward? And so they don't, we're not trying to um, label them. Mm -hmm. We're trying to continue the support. That's great. 
That's great. I appreciate that. You know, I um, we've always encouraged our our children uh, that uh, friends are really really important. Absolutely. Uh, you know, which friends you choose to be around uh, can make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. And I and I've noticed that you've mentioned friends, friends that will help you mm -hmm. be successful, and maybe to separate yourself from friends who uh, are are helping you be less successful. Right. Um, how, Im how important are friends for these kids? I mean, I, I remember growing up that my friends were everything. I mean, I thought about my friends before I thought about right. my family, right? Um, Friday night, I wasn't thinking about spending time with my family. I was thinking about hanging out with my friends. So how, how important are friends to kids and, and, and what kind of influences can they be? So it's, it's really, um, that is such a big question anymore. It used to be when our era that your friends were the people that lived next to you because you didn't have friends that lived in China or right. you know, um, Oklahoma that, um, that now kids, because with social media, they're connected to people, you have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so that whole friend issue is a very bigger conversation. Um, but it is such an impact on the way kids move through life. And if they are finding um, kids that are positive and goal-directed and that they actually have connections with, um, physical connection with, um, they can seek out success because then they're hanging out with them and going to healthy activities and they're enjoying sports or they're going to families' houses that are healthy family lives. Mm -hmm. um, and you see those kids that can connect to people that have that same positive outlook on the world, that have a goal mentality of moving forward. Um, those kids really do pretty well. And in comparison to those kids that get drawn into drama groups or kids that are involved with drugs or alcohol, those, you know, the things that have been around for generations, mm -hmm. those kids really struggle finding success because um, that's not part, of, um, not part of the environment. They're looking for happiness right here and now. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so friends is, is such an important component. And as I'm sure you know, as a parent, um, we become dumber. Um, and <laughs> we lose a lot of knowledge as kids come into adolescence. Sure. Um, we don't know as much as we did. Um, and then we get really smart when they're about 25. They're like, oh, I guess I should have listened. Um, so if you can, if, making sure that you're aware of who your kids are hanging out with, who they're on social media with, who they're spending their weekends with, who the families are hanging out with, that is so important to be involved with those families as a community. So we're moving, helping our kids move forward. Um, and not letting them decide uh, their cultural environment, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So let me take this. Uh, let me take this one step further, if I may, and and if it's inappropriate, you just let me know. But okay. what you know, we talked about uh, about the kids and their friends. How important is home life for these children? And and what what happens at home that helps them to be successful? So that is, um, that is a great question. Probably we, another really broad it's, question. It's a very broad you know, question. We could do another show on it probably. Um, it was, and we just actually were just talking to that. So we were meeting as a mental health team just prior to this, um, to this interview. And we were talking about there's only, we can change a lot of things in the school systems. We can provide the supports. We can provide different classroom settings. We can provide um, para-pro supports or you know, student aid supports. But all we can do is fix this environment. Um, if we don't have an impact of what changes at home, then the kids will never, never, never find success. For kids to be successful, success needs to look like success in school, success at, success at home, and success with their friends. If there's a component missing, then there's a, there's a struggle. Um, it's, a, it's a huge struggle for them to overcome. And so we have a lot of kids that we try to support in the school setting, but we're not we can't force change at home. Right. We can't force parents to go to counseling. We can't sure. force parents to take their kids to counseling. Um, we can't force parents to make sure their kids don't have social media open all night long um, and have access to that. We can't change that. Um, but we know and we see in the school setting that if we can't bring the parents on board, then the change that we can create in school is very, very small. Okay. Would you say, you mentioned three things I think you said success in the school setting, success in the home setting, mm -hmm. and success in their friendships and mm -hmm. their social lives. So if, if one of those three are missing or lacking, do we find uh, that they fill that with something else, somewhere else? Uh, 
you know, like, like maybe, uh, you know, if, if home life is, is lacking, maybe they spend uh, way too much time with friends, way too much time on social media, that kind of stuff, and then that, and then that uh, maybe that home life suffers? Um, that's not a yes or no question, so I, I don't know how to answer that one. It's always different for every kid. Kids, kids are amazing. Um, they're very more resilient than I think most people give them credit for. They will get their needs met. If a kid is um, wanting attention, needing emotional support, if he's not getting it from home where, where the primary support should be, he's going to go somewhere else to find it. And the danger comes in, where does he go to find it? Okay, yeah, that's, that's basically what I was wondering. You know, there is kids that will go to social media to find that emotional support they need because they're not getting it at home. And maybe they're super lucky and get onto a really supportive website and they get a hold of some really good virtual friends. Not very common. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they find some really good supportive friends at home or at school and they spend a lot of time at those families' houses. And I see a lot of that. You, there's a lot of of uh, moms at school, at, uh, moms that I deal with that are moms to many kids that are not their own. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll go to a football event and they'll be calling this woman, hey mom, hey mom, and, and you know that's not their mom, but there's that emotional connection and that's what they need and so they're seeking that out. Um, but if, you know, kids as well as adults, but kids are very resilient in getting their needs met and it's really important that there's a balance because if the, family, if the family isn't there to provide the support, then they're gonna go somewhere else and that's always where the risk comes in. Where are they going to get that need met? And who answers it quicker? Um, you know, if a kid is very, um, has a lot of very low social skills, for whatever reason, not because of a disability, but just has very poor social skills, maybe he never had parents telling him no or kind of did whatever they want, the group he's gonna be drawn toward is typically that antisocial group. And that brings apart a whole nother um, problems. Sure, sure. So, um, what, uh, I, I kind of got off on a couple of things that just That's came okay. to my mind as while we were speaking, so I, I appreciate you being willing to, it, to visit about I that. I just want to add one thing, real quick. Sure. And I, I guess for those people that are, that are listening, when I speak of some of the stuff like kids that get drawn to or negative behaviors and stuff, I'm speaking very globally. There is mm -hmm. always those success stories. I've sure. had kids that come out of very dysfunctional homes and are very successful in life. Sure. Um, I've had kids that have flunked out of school but end up being CEOs of companies. Yeah. So there's always those kids that do make it. The, you know, when I'm, the kids I'm talking about now is a very global general of what, yeah. what we're looking at as a society in our school systems. Right, right. Yeah, I know I, I didn't want to get super into specifics, sure. you know, kind of a 30,000 foot view. Um, but uh, anyway, when, when we talk about the uh, services that are offered here in, in the Sholo School District. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us more about that? Tell us uh, anything else of, that, that maybe we've missed that so you can tell us about? We're a little unique in our district just because um, the school board, supported by the school board, our special education programming is really, really dynamic. Um, starting all the way down from kindergarten all the way up through high school. We offer um, an inclusion classroom where they're dealing with autistic kids and special needs kids, your uh, low functioning students. Um, we offer a specialized program. They do community gardens. They go out and job skills. They do a lot of community-based programming. They go out and do stuff in the community. We have an EDP, which is an emotional uh, disability program at the high school where they go out and do job training. They do alternate, alternate educational learning to keep them from dropping out. We see a huge success with that program where typically you see a high dropout at that level. Um, at the junior high level, we have a, um, a special needs classroom, which is an alternative classroom for autistic kids and for low academic kids that provides specialized supports and learning. Um, there's also an emotional disability classroom at the junior high as well that provides that additional supports, behavioral supports, um, alternative learning. You know, they don't necessarily learn the typical classroom learning, but they do get the uh, behavioral supports to help them be successful and not drop out of school, not get suspended. Um, Nicholas Homestead has a, an emotional um, disabled program as well, as well as an alternative program to support uh, lower learners. Um, and, um, and then obviously down at Whipple Ranch, they have the um, alternative program or support program at the Whipple, Home, Whipple Ranch. Whipple Ranch yeah. <laughs> so um, I know that we have put a lot of emphasis on our special ed program here in this district and mm -hmm. we've wanted to we wanted to make it as excellent as we can what are some of the other things that make Sholo Unified School District 
uh, unique in the services it provides. So, uh, you know, kind of going back to what some of the extra stuff, because we have such a large mental health team, and, I, and three people seems like a not very much, but for a public school setting, that's a lot of people, especially in your rural schools. Yeah, and I was gonna say, we're a rural school, relatively small, so, Correct. you know, when you compare it to Maricopa County and some of those schools there, you know, that then uh, per capita, that's a pretty good number. Right, and so it's, it's unusual to have those many services, and not only do we service the um, special ed program, but those mental health support services are also for the general ed kids. So then just the kids that go into your regular classes, right. we provide those supports. And so through an intervention team, which is very um, intense, we, we involve mental health support services and identifying kids with, that are struggling, even if they're not special ed. With, um, we provide support services for people who have lost family members or are dealing with trauma in the family or personal trauma. Or uh, we have, we're able to not only support the kids that have special needs, but also the kids that are just in your general educa education setting in supporting some of those um, extra needs that schools typically won't, don't, don't provide. Great. So um, I know that, uh, you know, we've just got a minute or so left okay. and, and uh, I know that uh, above and beyond your responsibilities uh, with the district, I know that you're involved in the community and I just wanted to express gratitude for that. I know that you spend time with our kids and coaching uh -huh. uh, uh, responsibilities and, and whatnot. And, and I just wanna express my appreciate, appreciation for that. I, I also wanna take a moment to tell you how, how grateful I am that we have you. Uh, you know, when we talked a little bit about continuing education and the fact that uh, you know, you got your bachelor's, you got your master's, you got your doctorate. And really, although those are um, personally uh, right. for you, uh, you know, it's, it's success and it's uh, growth on your end, you know, we, we reap the benefits uh, of that for our children and, and for the other uh, uh, shareholders in our district. And for that, I'm really grateful. Thank you. I enjoy and being part of the district. You bet. We're, well, we're glad to have you, and I appreciate you coming on to see us today. Thank you. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us here on School Zone, and we'll see you again soon.